Hello and welcome to the Socrato TV. Uh, to those who are new to our channel at the Socrato TV, we discuss matters to do with the politics in our country and our focus is to actually explain to people the happenings in politics uh, which in the end is aimed at helping them to make actually good uh, or informed uh, decisions. And I am always here, Socrato. Uh, so if you like politics, then maybe you may consider hitting that subscribe button. So our today's stories is regarding uh, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Rigadi Gashagwa, who calls himself the truthful man. And it is to do with his uh, issue of Mount Kenya, whereby we've seen that he's been struggling so much to actually uh, be the kingpin of Mount Kenya, whereby he wants to be uh, to take over Uhuru and Mugei Kenyatta. And there's this story that has actually been publicized today in newspaper, where Rigadi Gachagua says that uh, Deputy President Rigadi Gachagua has said that the contest in Mount Kenya is between leaders championing the community's interest and the sellouts with the latter tag upsetting his critics, who are mostly allied to President William Ruto. And Mr. Gashagwa has imposed a December 31st deadline for regional leaders who are not listening to the ground. A disguised reference to his critics to change course or face backlash during the 2027 general election. So Rigadi Gashagwa has actually warned uh, leaders, that is, members of parliament who comes from Mount Kenya region and are supporting Dr. William Samuel Ruto, that if by 31st of December this year, if they will not have aligned themselves with him now as the kingpin of Mount Kenya, then they will lose their political seats in the 2027 election. And I think that is a very ambitious dream for Rigadi Gashagwa, but it could also uh, mean uh, something or it could ha have some valid uh, truth in it and that's what I want us to critically look so that we can see what this means to us politically. But before we start looking into this discussion today, I'm requesting all those who are into our channel, just take one second and hit that subscribe button so that we can continue creating a bigger family of the Socrato TV. Welcome back to the Socrato TV. Now, from the piece I read to you, where Gashagwa is actually sending a warning to these members of parliament, I see is now on what I actually see as a consolidation move, eh? <laughs> consolidation move to try and consolidate eh, the Mount Kenya region around himself, whereby he will regard any other individual who doesn't want to rally around him as an enemy. And you can clearly see here that what he's doing, he's creating us versus me kind of uh, situation whereby you are either with me or you are against me. So he consider anybody who does not, who supports Dr. William Samuel to, to be against him which may not necessarily be the case, and anybody who supports him against Dr. William Samuel Ruto. And I think uh, for him, as an individual or sort of a politician, it could work. Eh? It could work in the sense that some people could fear, indeed, they could look ahead and say, hey, looking how things are going, this guy may actually be a popular person in the year 2027. But one will ask himself, is Rigadi Gashagwa not part of the Ruto's administration? So if he believes or if he thinks that he's the only person who the region, Mount Kenya people can rally around, why would they rally around him? Is he not part of Ruto's administration? I think uh, as much as that could work eh, to him, I, I find it really not very difficult to believe that now after Ruto, it is Rigadi Gashagwa who can really solve the Kenyans' problems. Uh, Rigadi Gashagwa, okay, 
Dr. William Samuel Ruto was the deputy president of Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta in the previous regime. And uh, when Ruto Uhuru was leaving power, he brought uh, Raila Amolo Odinga while Ruto also contested with the president of the Republic of Kenya. And we saw how uh, Ruto really said, oh, Uhuru is working, is not working. He has failed. I am now going to change the, the country for the better. And if you look at it critically, if you, if you are sober enough, Ruto and Uhuru are all uh, in the same administration. So it did not make a lot of sense to elect the deputy unless the deputy, assuming Uhuru had performed well, we will say, okay, let's elect the deputy because we expect he will be able to continue with the administration of Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. But if the administration has fall or has fallen down that is that it's not performing then it is only but appropriate for the whole administration to go home and in fact our constitution puts it very well the presidency is actually made up of the president and the deputy president so regarding Gashago is also contradicting himself here or he doesn't really get the constitution if anybody's against the president he's also against Gadi Gashago if he's against Gary Gashago, he's against the president. Because these two people are intertwined at the hip by the constitution of the Republic of Kenya. So these moves that Gary Gashago is making, I don't think they have the interest of people at heart. Even they do not have the interest of the Mount Kenya people at heart. They have only the interest of Rigathi and Rigathi alone. So his idea is to consolidate, that is to create fear among other members of parliament, try and coerce others. So it is about dividing and conquering. And I don't really get how he will be able to make these members of parliament not get elected. Assuming Dr. William Samuel Ruto also intervenes and supports them. So we are here to actually see how that will actually turn out. I also see that Rigadi Gashagwa is up to create what... Uh, Raila Molo Odinga has been having, whereby Raila Molo Odinga has been having a very loyal fan base or a very loyal backing. For instance, in the Nyanda region, Raila Molo Odinga has very loyal supporters, people who can do anything just for Raila Molo Odinga. So, Rigadi Gashago wants uh, to do, to also to have such kind of followers, but he has forgotten that Raila Molo Odinga really has created that large following for a very long period of time. And Rigadi Gashago has only been in power, I think, for... She has been member of parliament for a time. And then he was... Uh, sorry. He was uh, the... Now he's the deputy president, also one term. So you can hear his political life is very, very short. So it, it cannot really make sense and it is very difficult for him to actually uh, be able to create such kind of following like Raila Amolo Odinga. Why am I saying he's trying to create a following like Raila Amolo Odinga? He wants to ensure that all his critics are down. Anybody who tries to criticize him is suppressed. Anybody who supports him, he actually applauds to him and supports them. Raila Molo Ninga also has been using the same in another region whereby a person who looked like he was opposing him, for instance, let's use this region of Homa Bay, whereby you have Governor Wanga and Kidero. When Kidero, when they were fighting for the party ticket, it was given to Gladys Wanga because, because Kidero was looked at or was believed to be a person who did not really have the support or, loyalty, or did not have his loyalty to Raila Amolo Odinga. So, that is what Raila Molo Odinga has been doing throughout within the region of uh, Nyanza. And it has also been very detrimental to him politically because there are people in Nyanza who, uh, apart from voting Raila Molo Odinga, okay, they are supporters of Raila Molo Odinga, but they are not supporters of Wanga. Maybe they are supporters of, of Kidero. So he suppressed his voters intentionally by doing that. And uh, the best thing he could have done is just to allow free nomination to go on. And if that is what Gashagwa wants to borrow, then he may never see the presidency just ra like Raila has not actually been able to see it. 
I also see that Gashagwa is lying ground actually for future ambition as the president of Kenya. And this is based on the fact that if he succeeds to consolidate Mount Kenya region, then it is argued that Mount Kenya region is a region that has very many uh, voters. Eh? voters. And these voters, when they rally around one person, that person is actually ahead of other candidates. It makes that person easy to actually become the president. So, regarding Gashago ideas to rally himself or to rally people from Kenya around himself, get that votes, and then use it to negotiate with the other presidential candidate, either to become a president or just maintain his deputy president's stature. So, it was good for him if indeed he succeeds. Uh, but by intimidating people, starting intimidating people, telling that they will see, I think he no, is not really on the right track. He needs to, to speak to these members of parliament like sober people, eh? like his equals, because they are his equals, of course, they are all leaders. So he needs to engage them, not to lecture them. The last thing I also see that regarding Gashiago is just being a tribalistic leader. A very tribal leader, I mean, a leader who only sees his region. You know, the president, the deputy president of Kenya, is supposed to represent the whole country, not a region. The fact that he is so much focused in that region is actually what also threatens or makes a lot of people find it very difficult to trust that he can actually be a good president. He needs to emancipate himself from that mindset of only thinking about Mount Kenya. We are currently in the 21st century. That's an information uh, era whereby we have to exchange ideas. We have to think about ideas. You cannot just uh, really limit yourself within a region to tell us that Mount Kenya ought to imprint. You know, sometimes that is usually very boring. Eh? Whereby an individual is still stuck in a very long uh, type of politics, long, long, ancient eh? or, very, or very old type of politics. We need to discuss ideas, Mr. Rigazi Kashag or Mr. Deputy President. Let us not really uh, force ourselves or uh, re really get stuck in a very distressive kind of politics. How will we really grow if we uh, base our ideas on regions? If we base our politics on ideologies, people can unite based on ideas. I can be from Turkana, I can be from Busia, I can be from Bungoma, I can be from Nairobi, I can be from Mombasa, I can be from anywhere within this Republic of Kenya and unite based on the ideas. That is what the Constitution of Kenya envisioned, not based on regions. I don't know what you think about this. Please feel free to share opinion at the comment box. Until we meet again, bye-bye.